welcome to the deep dive. We're here to unpack some really fascinating research making complex science uh, hopefully a bit more accessible. Today we're diving into something truly groundbreaking. It's this new research aiming for a personalized cure for HIV. Our main source is a big announcement from the Wistar Institute. They've just landed a major NIH grant, five years, $17 million, big stuff. And they're launching something called the iCure Consortium with it. So our mission today is to really explore this, this idea of tailored individual medicine for HIV eradication. We're moving beyond just managing the virus, you know. We're talking about potentially getting rid of it completely. <laughs> now, when we think about HIV, sometimes it feels like maybe a problem from the past, but it's very much current. We're looking at around 38 million people globally still living with HIV and um, about 1.3 million new infections every single year. It's still a massive ongoing health challenge. Really puts it in perspective, doesn't it? It really does. And, you know, what's fundamental here is that even with amazing progress, especially with antiretroviral therapy, RT, which, as you know, has been transformative. It's turned HIV into something manageable for many people. Not the death sentence it once was. But we still don't have a cure. And the core issue, the real sticking point, is what we call the persistent viral reservoir. That reservoir, exactly. exactly. This is where the virus essentially hides out. It goes dormant in certain cells, and it becomes invisible. Invisible to the person's immune system, and crucially, invisible to the RT drugs. So if someone stops taking their meds... The virus comes back. It rebounds. That reservoir is the fundamental hurdle we need to overcome for a cure. And that's exactly what the Wistar Institute and their partners are tackling head-on now. This new $17 million NIH grant for eye cure property, it's not just about slightly better drugs, is it? Their goal sounds incredibly ambitious. Individualized cure regimens. They're talking tailored, personalized medicine for HIV. It absolutely is a paradigm shift, mm. a huge one. And the significance of this grant, and maybe even more so the consortium itself, is massive. It's bringing together some serious heavy hitters. You've got Dr. Louis Montaner from Worcester leading it. He's a real leader in HIV research. Okay. And then Dr. Drew Weissman from Penn is the co-PI. You'll remember him, of course, 2023 Nobel Prize for his mRNA work. Right. The mRNA vaccine technology. Precisely. Yeah. But it's not just Western Penn. You've got Johns Hopkins, Philadelphia PhD, the Reagan Institute, which connects Harvard and MIT, George Washington Uni, Duke. It's a huge collaboration. Mm -hmm. A real brain trust focused on this one enormous challenge. Mm -hmm clearing that reservoir. Okay, so the collaboration is key. Mm -hmm. But what makes the approach itself so innovative? You mentioned a six-part individually tailored therapy. Mm. That sounds complex. It's designed specifically to wipe out that reservoir, aiming for, what, drug-free remission? Durable drug-free remission. That's the goal. And the really wild part seems to be that all six parts are designed against each patient's unique virus. So what are these six tactics? How do they work together? Yeah, this is where it gets really cutting edge. They're combining, okay, first, very specific neutralizing antibodies. Second, mRNA therapy, leveraging Dr. Weissman's expertise, obviously. Third, specialized viral binders. Fourth, engineered CHI-R T cells. You hear a lot about those in cancer therapy. Right, CHI-RT. Fifth, engineered natural killer cells, or NK cells. And sixth, targeted latency wake-up drugs. Wow, okay. That's a lot. It is. And if you connect this to the bigger picture, each of these is kind of a breakthrough on its own, but putting them together and personalizing them, that's the revolution. Dr. Weissen's involvement, for instance, means directly applying those RNA therapy advances as part of a cure strategy for HIV. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach at all. It's highly specific, multi-layered, using everything we've learned about immunology, gene editing, you name it, to target that specific person's virus. Okay, let's walk through that process then. How does iCure actually plan to achieve this durable remission? It sounds like a really intricate step-by-step -step thing. Where do they even start? Finding this hidden virus must be the first challenge. Yeah, exactly. Step one is basically wake the latent virus. Okay. They take a blood sample from the participant. Then they use those latency wake-up drugs we mentioned. These drugs gently nudge the dormant virus hiding in the cells to become active again, just briefly. Yeah. So it's detectable. Making it visible again. Precisely. But the key insight here is, by doing that, they can identify the exact genetic mutations in that person's virus that their own immune system hasn't developed antibodies against yet. These are the virus's current vulnerabilities for that specific individual. Ah, so finding the unique weak spots for that person's virus. That's it. Which, you know, raises the question of scalability, doesn't it? Doing this for millions. Yeah, that's a huge question. It is a massive undertaking. Mm -hmm. But the precision is why it's so potentially powerful. You're identifying individual mutations. 
and then you're custom designing therapies against those mutations. It's a level of targeting we just haven't had before, mm -hmm. pushing the boundaries. Absolutely. The scaling is a future challenge, but this is about proving the concept, laying that groundwork. So once they find those unique, untargeted weak spots, what's next? Step two. Step two is map and target unique weak spots with tailored antibodies. Okay. Based on those mutations they found, they develop a specific cocktail of antibody therapies, engineered precisely against those unique vulnerabilities for that individual. Like a custom key for that person's specific viral lock. You got it. Not a general drug, a bespoke solution exploiting the virus's exact weaknesses in that patient. Okay. So you find the virus's weak spots, you design antibodies for them, but then you actually have to destroy the infected cells, right? That's the hard part. That's step three. Destroy infected cells using supercharged ICAR T and NK cells. The supercharged immune cells, how does that work? So researchers take these immune cells, CHIR T cells and natural killer cells, and genetically engineer them. They modify them to express what they call homing devices. Think of them like little GPS systems. Homing devices. Yeah, these could be person-specific antibodies or small molecule binders. They act like beacons. They guide these modified supercharged immune cells directly to the infected cells that need clearing out. So you're basically upgrading the body's own hit squad and giving them precise coordinates. That's a great way to put it. The power of engineered CRT and NK cells here is immense. We're making the immune system smarter and more targeted. And these homing devices, that's a real advance. They ensure the killer cells go exactly where they need to go, not just wandering around. Okay, I see. It's applying these advanced cellular therapies with incredible precision, like surgical strikes against the hidden virus. But is that enough? Just clearing them out once? What about relapse? Good point. That brings us to the final stage, step four. Enhance clearance and block relapse with bispecific binders. This is crucial for making it durable. Okay, bispecific binders. What are those? It's a two-part strategy here. First, they develop even stronger, more durable adaptive NK cells, boosting their killing power further. Then they deploy these small molecule drugs called bispecifics. Mm. Think of them like molecular double-sided tape or maybe tiny bridges. One end binds strongly to the enhanced NK cell and the other end binds directly to the HIV-infected cell they need to eliminate. Ah, so it physically links the killer cell to its target? Exactly. It ensures an even more efficient and thorough cleanup. It forces that close contact needed for the kill. These advanced NK strategies and bispecifics are absolutely critical for achieving that durable, drug-free remission goal. It's not just about the initial attack. It's about preventing the virus from staging a comeback making sure it stays gone. That sounds incredibly thorough. And you mentioned earlier, this isn't coming out of nowhere. It builds on previous work. Yes, that's important. The iCure project directly furthers the research groundwork laid by the Beat HIV Martin Delaney Collaboratory. Mm -hmm. That's another major long-running consortium focused on HIV cures. So this stands on the shoulders of giants, leveraging years of collective effort and understanding. Right, building on that foundation. Exactly. And what iCure does so well is it takes full advantage of all the recent progress we've made in understanding how and where HIV hides. For so long, that reservoir was like a black box. Now we understand it much better. And that detailed knowledge allows for, as Dr. Montana puts it, this first of its kind targeting to a person's unique HIV features. It's a huge leap. So pulling back a bit, what does this all really mean for the future? for the millions living with HIV. I mean, this sounds incredibly complex and personalized. It is complex. And you know, this specific project isn't just about HIV in a way. It's also a massive test case for personalized medicine itself. The techniques they're developing, the detailed viral mapping, the custom cell engineering these could have huge implications for other diseases too. Like cancer, maybe, or autoimmune diseases. Potentially, yes. Anywhere where a highly specific tailored approach might overcome the limitations of standard treatments. And this whole collaborative model, bringing together all these different experts and institutions, that itself is a potential blueprint for tackling other big medical challenges. That's a really interesting perspective. And for this study specifically, what's the hope by the end of the five years? Well, Dr. Montaner is hopeful. He said they aim to have a refined process by then. A clear method to identify the specific viral targets in each person and a solid basis for designing future clinical trials based on these personalized strategies. So laying the groundwork for the next phase. Exactly. It's crucial to manage expectations. This isn't an immediate cure ready tomorrow. It's still early stage clinical development, but it really does feel like a once in a lifetime opportunity 
as the announcement said. It's a monumental step towards truly personalized eradication strategies. It pushes the boundaries built on incredible collaboration. It gives us a real glimpse into a future where treatments are potentially designed for you specifically. It really is transformative thinking, a huge shift towards highly personalized, multi-pronged attacks on the virus, targeting its unique features in each individual. Which leaves us with something to think about, doesn't it? Well, if this level of precision and personalization works for something as complex as curing HIV, tailoring therapies right down to individual biology, how might that kind of approach revolutionize how we treat other really complex, challenging diseases in the future? Things beyond infections, even. A really powerful question to leave us with. Food for thought, indeed. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive today. We hope you'll keep exploring and stay informed about these incredible scientific journeys. Until next time.